to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. We honor you, Lord, tonight. We exalt you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, there's no one else like you in all the earth. You are worthy, Lamb of God. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. We exalt you today, O oh God. We lift you higher than our circumstances and our trials, our problems, our disappointments, our discouragements. If you high, oh God, you are great. Your mercy endures forever, God. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. than the skin on our bones. You're more realer than the wind in our lungs. Lord, we honor you tonight. Hallelujah. Good evening, cousin. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord God. You are so worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. Mighty is our God. You are the living word, the fountain of life. We bless your name, O oh God. You are sovereign and you're holy. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, O oh God. Bless your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give it a couple more minutes the way it gets started. Just worshiping the Lord right now because he's worthy. Lamb of God, he is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of the glory. He sits upon the throne of our hearts. We magnify him. We exalt the Lord our God. We worship at his footstool. Lifted up, O oh God. You reign in majesty and dominion and authority. There's no one like our God. We can search the whole world wide and find that there's no God like Jehovah, our God, the King of glory, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, O oh God. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, O oh God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. The psalmist said, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You know, we can trust in the Lord. We can't find confidence and trust in nobody else. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. He's right there on our side every day, leading us into victory. 
I'm going to start out with a devotional tonight. It's from the book, More of You, God. It says, Precious Savior, today I get down on bended knees, bowing down unto you, my King. This month is a representation of your holy days. I come to honor you. I lift up holy hands to you and only you, Lord God. You are King of kings, Lord of lords, and the God of gods, and there is no one like you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is no one like you, Lord Jesus. Right now, I hear the trumpet sounding. I'm giving you all the glory. Father, cleanse my heart so you can reside in it. I want to be more like you, Lord Jesus. Holy is the Lamb of God. I will not let the world distract me from getting into your presence and spending quality time with you, Lord God. I know as I take this time to celebrate you, you always do more for me than I can possibly do by honoring you. During this special appointed time, as I repent and worship you with all my heart. You release blessings upon blessings on me. You say you will give me an increase, a fresh anointing, miracles, restoration, deliverance, revelation, financial abundance, and your sweet presence. This life I have is all about having more and more of you, God. Amen. Amen. You know, that's every day that she should be the cry of our hearts to have more of God in us. We're living in a time where many are suffering from this pandemic. Many have lost their jobs. Many are hurting. Many people are in despair. Some are contemplating suicide. Some have just given up hope. Some are just in their despair. They don't know what to do. And, but I, I come to tell you tonight that God is the answer. He is the answer to all of our problems, our situations. I speak healing over all of those who are suffering right now with the COVID-19 virus. I speak deliverance in your mind, your body, and your spirit, and your soul that it will align it with the word of God and be healed in the name of Jesus. Because God said in his word that the healing is the children's bread. He sent his word to heal you and deliver you from all destruction. Just receive it by faith. And know that it is yours as you trust in God's word and you stand fast in the faith. God promises that he would deliver you speedily when you call upon him in faith and stand on his word. There's nothing too hard for God. God is the author and perfecter of our faith. He has the power to heal and deliver us from all destruction, every assassination, every attack the enemy has plotted against you as a believer. I want you to be encouraged tonight to know that God is our healer. He's our redeemer. Jeremiah 33 and 6 says, The Lord says, I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Proverbs 14 Verse 30 says, a heart at peace give life to the body. Then Psalms 30, verse 2 and 3, O Lord my God, I called you for help and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave and you spared me from going down into the pit. Jeremiah 30, verse 17, I will restore health to you and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Exodus 15, verse 26, the Lord said, I am the Lord who heals you. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart and good news gives health to the bones. Proverbs 15 verse 30. Proverbs 3 verse 7 and 8 says, Do not be wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. James chapter 5 verse 15. The prayer often in faith will make the sick person well and the Lord will raise him up. Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgive all your sins and heals all your diseases. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins and his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. 
by his wounds you have been healed. So as we go into our prayer tonight before we uh, engage into our lesson, uh, we've been dealing with the spirit of perversion. I just want to lift up a prayer for all of you who are right now uh, physically going through any type of illness or infirmity because I know God is able to cause the, your body to respond to his word and be healed. He sent his word to heal you and deliver you from every destruction. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I come before you, Lord God, thanking you for your supernatural power, your ability working in and through our lives. I thank you, Lord God, that every time we call on that great name, Jesus, you hear us, God. Lord, I thank you that you are working in our behalf behind the scenes, oh God, that you're teaching us how to be synchronized by the spirit of the living God to receive in a timely order the supernatural ability of God working in our lives. Lord, I lift up my parents and my sisters, oh God, who's, who's been attacked with the infirmities of the COVID, Lord God, those, Father God, relatives and friends, associates, enemies, oh God, those who are afflicted with this virus, God, we decree and declare that this sickness shall not end in death, but it shall promote the glory of God. We bind this infirmity in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease, every attack, every immune system that's been weakened by this virus, oh God, or any other illness that caused the immune system to be weakened, God, that the body's not responding to be healed. Father, we bind it in Jesus' name. Every assault, every assassination, every negative foul spirit that's come to attack your people, God, tonight, we send it back to the pit of hell from whence it come from. I loose the anointing, God. I loose the power of God. I loose the word of God to manifest in their bodies right now, in their minds, oh God, that their minds will be healed because you, it starts with the origination of the mindset. Father, cause the mindsets to be changed right now from fear and to faith, from doubt to trusting God. Cause our mindsets, oh God, to be converted from darkness to light, oh God, to begin to see you at work in our bodies. We thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful. You said in your word, it is impossible to even approach you without faith, oh God, because we, when we come to you, we must believe that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Lord, I lift up uh, Denise and Deborah Cole, Father God. I speak healing over their bodies, God, over tendonitis, over back pains, and Father, and different ailments that has attached itself to their bodies, oh God. Those who are dealing with arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, God. Those who are dealing Father God, with leukemia, cancer cells, oh God. All these different illnesses, oh God. Mental torment. Mental abuse, physical abuse, oh God. I bind these symptoms and side effects back to the pit of hell. And in response, God, I thank you that the blood still works. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over every person, oh God, that's been attacked with some type of illness, some type of discomfort, some type of financial attack. Father, whatever that attack is that's come against your people, God, I thank you that the blood of Jesus is being applied to the doorposts of their hearts, that the death angel would pass them by, the death angel that come to kill their finances. The death angel that comes with God to steal their purpose. The death angel that comes to steal their vision. The death angel that comes to steal their, my Father God, their, their, oh God, hallelujah, their businesses, oh God. Let your divine will and your order be established in our hearts, oh God, that we will believe the word of God without a reasonable doubt. We will stand firm in the faith of Jesus Christ who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. I lift up, Father, my friend, Pastor Nate, oh God. I speak healing over his, his voice, oh God. With the enemy is trying to attack him with cold virus, whatever it is, God. Sinuses, oh God. Many are suffering with sinus infections and ear infections, oh God. I lift up my son, oh God, that the healing would take place in his body, God, from the ear infection in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we send the word right now over the airways, oh God, to reach your people right where they are in the homes, in the hospital, coalescent homes, oh God. It doesn't matter where they are, that the word will penetrate the darkness of sickness and cause the light of your glory to shine right where they are, that they will receive the healing and be healed in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God, that it is so according to the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I felt that tonight because I, I, I received healing myself. Sometimes we, we get into a place of anxiety. Some deal with depression. Some deals with worrying. Some deals with, with just the pressures of life. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. God's word overpowers the thoughts of the enemy. God's word supersedes the attacks of the enemy. But you got to believe it. You got to believe God's word for yourself and know with confidence that God's word is working in your life to bring you to the place of victory, to bring you to the place of overcoming. God bless you, Drew. God bless you, Julie. You got to believe the word of God for yourself in order to be healed. Healing is not just going to drop on you and it's supposed to just happen. Without faith, you cannot be healed. Faith operates by the power of God's word and it manifests to bring the healing in your life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The title D and the evidence of things not seen. So you got to believe in God's word. You got to synchronize your faith with God's faith. You know what that synchronized means? Getting to a place where everything is, is operating at the same time. In the same anointing. In the same ability of God. It's happening at the same time. God is everywhere at the same time. He synchronizes himself with our hearts when we operate in faith to believe God for something in our lives. And it happens. Why? Because we're trusting in his word. You cannot doubt God. You cannot doubt his promises. You cannot doubt that God can move in your situation. You got to believe that God can move in your situation. And in the process, you get the results of your faith manifesting. One thing about God, he may not move when you want him to move. He moves in his own timing, his own purpose, his own ability, his own desire. He manifested in his own season to take place in your life. Healing will happen. You can think yourself well or you can think yourself sick. The more you dwell and magnify your symptoms, in your sicknesses, the worse your body becomes. I, I'm a living testimony. When I was lying in the hospital, I talk about it a lot because I had to thank God for grace and mercy that was upon my life and still is. When I was going through cancer, I was in the hospital suffering. Even when I got out of the hospital suffering, I kept standing on God's word until my body responded to the word of God and the healing started manifesting. I got recovered faster than the doctor expected. Why? Because of my faith was not in myself. It was in God's ability to heal me. So we're going to go into our lesson tonight, the spirit of perversion. You know one thing about the spirit of perversion? What the enemy does it's a trick from the enemy. He'll take the things that are good and make it appear to be evil. Then he'll take the evil things in your life and make it appear to be good. So he corrupts the things that God has established to take place in your life. The plan of God he has for you, the vision God has for you, the purpose God has for you, the destiny God has for you. He'll take it and make you doubt God's ability that it would never happen. Why? Because he don't want to see you successful. You're not going to become successful if you can't tap into the anointing and begin to operate by the Spirit of God to allow this thing to take place in your life. Many businesses will not prosper until you begin to line up with God's Word. 
Anything God put in your heart to do. Paul says in Ephesians 4 and 1 that we are to, he said, I am therefore a, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, beseech you that you walk worthy of your vocation wherewith you have been called. You've been called to a particular work of ministry. Doesn't matter what that gift is, it might be hospitality, it might be encouraging, it might be giving, it might be laboring. Whatever it is you're called to do, you have to do it wholeheartedly in faith and believe that God that it will be successful in your life. Proverbs 17, verse 20. It says, He who has a crooked mind finds no good. He who is perverted in his language falls into evil. You can fall into a mindset of unbelief, which is crooked. And you would never have anything good happen for you. There are some people who say, every, every time I turn around, bad stuff always happened to me. Because of the confession. That's why he said perverted in your language. Your mouth has to line up with your thought life. Your thought life needs to line up with your confession. Whatever it is you think about, good or evil, your imagination of the mind is going to begin to produce an image of those things taking place in your life until it happens. Then you confess it out of your mouth, and because you confess it out of your mouth, you get the results of what you've been thinking. That's powerful. You have what you say, you get the results of your imagination. Why? Because I thought it, it went into my heart, I spoke it, then it happened. Some people said, everyone in my, I heard it was one person say one time, he says, uh, the men in my family, they all died at the age of 50. And he said, but I'm still alive. I haven't made it to 50 yet, but I know I'm going to die too, because that's been in my, my family. Every male child dies at 50. I said, well, brother, you can change your confession. If you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, give your heart to the Lord, God will break that curse off of your life. That's a curse from the enemy. Anything that does not line up with God's word is a curse from the enemy to assassinate your purpose. Then the next verse, it says, Proverbs 4, verse 24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious speech from you, far from you. So you got to allow your mouth to not get into the trap of deceitment or being devious, plotting evil, speaking with your mouth how you're going to harm somebody, how you're going to hurt them, going to mess up their day, because your day is miserable, I'm going to make their day miserable too. So as we go into our book tonight, we've been talking about the spirit of perversion for the last couple of weeks. And this, tonight's subject, man is not synchronized. I'm going to read something from the book. And then I'm going to discuss it and break it down for an understanding so you know what, what God is trying to convey to us tonight through his word. All right. So it says unregenerated man is not synchronized with God's universe. Sin has twisted him so that right is wrong, dark is light, and a lie is truth. Satan is creditable and God is outdated. Isaiah puts it like this. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. People who attend our crusade in Latin America tells of parents who would prefer that their children be alcoholics than Protestants. Protestants is a believer, whatever type of religion you, you serve. Some Muslims kill family members who accepted Christ. Many people in India would not kill rats because their belief in reincarnation. As a result, the rats eat the food and the people starve to death. We're told that mothers in certain parts of Africa have thrown their babies to crocodiles to appease the demons they serve. Mm. Why? Their minds have been darkened and perverted by sin. Isn't that amazing 
how the belief system of different cultures fall under the spirit of perversion, deception, manipulation, controlling spirits by the demonic forces, and it caused you to live a lie and believe in a lie and follow after a lie, after the custom of lies. So many Muslims kill their family members who accept Christ. Things like this still happens today. Then you got people in India who believe that rats symbolize reincarnation. So the rats eat up their food and they starve to death. Why? Because they believe in a lie. Then in Africa, parents throwing their babies to crocodiles to appease demons they serve. When they feel like the spirit is agitated or the spirit is acting out, causing harm to them, they offer a sacrifice. You know around October 31st, uh, uh, witching hour or the witching day, that's when the demonic forces are roaming the earth even more rapidly because people are really believing in the satanic uh, uh, demonic uh, 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 spears. They're believing in those, those uh, attributes of spirits and causing themselves to fall into darkness. Only the light of God Word can break through such spiritual darkness and reveal the twisted conditions. Jesus informs his disciples as well as the human race in general, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what are you following? What 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 is driving you tonight? What spirit is controlling your heart? What demonic force is controlling your thought life? And when you think about it, when you're not giving into the power of the Holy Spirit and following the thoughts of the Holy Spirit, you find the thoughts of the enemy or yourself, for example. Because ourselves, we can speak so much evil over ourselves by getting into agreement with whatever the enemy puts in our minds and it leads us down a pathway of destruction. God makes us new creatures when we accept Christ as our Savior. But our minds must still be reprogrammed daily by the renewing power of the Word of God. Romans 12, chapter verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be changed every day by the power of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. There's no answers, buts about it, no second guessing it. There's a guarantee, it's a must, it's a divine order from God that you got to change your thinking. God is not playing with us in these last days. We need to make up our minds who we are going to serve. All this cussing out one another and, and having a, an attitude of negativity, a foul demonic spirit on you where you're not, not treating people right in your own home. That's a demonic perversion spirit. That perversion spirit make you feel like you have the right to act out the way you do, which is contrary to God's word. God says that's a lie from the devil. God has spoken word that we have to change this filthy thinking. And the only way it's going to change, the more you feed your spirit on the word of God, the more you listen to worship and praise and gospel music, something to feed your spirit, to keep you in the mindset of worship and serving God, your attitude will not change. Your attitude determines your thought life. Why? Because your thought life determines your attitude. If your thought life is not line, lining up with God's word, then you're going to have the mindset of the enemy. It's going to always be negative, foul, and ugly, and just acting out with anger and harshness and bitterness and raging outbursts and all these different things. Why? Because you're not giving your mind to the Lord. If you don't give your mind to the Lord, the enemy takes control of your thought line, which leads down a pathway of destruction. We are to cast down imaginations 
and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Only then we can have a sound mind. The 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us, and available to those who do not allow this world to press them into its mold. So if you have a sound mind, you're not allowing the world to squeeze you into its systems, or its customs, or its attitude, or its mindset. You're yielding to the Holy Spirit's leadership and its dominating force to control your life. Don't allow Satan followers to give you an inferiority complex. Don't allow people who do not believe what you believe to change your belief system. Don't allow people who do not trust in the God you serve to change your heart to begin to trust into what they're serving. This world is having a gigantic nervous breakdown as it blindly follows Satan, a twisted, perverted lunatic. And they have the nerve to say we are crazy because we follow Christ. The world is falling apart because they're following the lunatic, Satan. If you're not following God's truth, then you're going to follow after a lie. The truth is that it is insane to reject a loving God who has done everything possible to save mankind from the filthy clutches of the universe, universal perverted Satan. God has gave us the remedy. God gave us the solution. God gave us the wisdom and the knowledge on how to overcome the perverted Satan's, his universal control, his mind control. He gave us the solution on how to deal with that. That's Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. When you let Christ's mind be in you, he dominates. He overpowers the enemy thoughts and calls you to have healthy thoughts, fruitful thoughts, abundant thoughts that follows after the word of God. Proverbs verse 6, verse 14. 6 verse 14. Who with perversity in his heart continually devises evil, who spreads strife. If you got a perverse heart, your heart desires is going to be perverted, corrupt. Anything you got in your heart that's not lining with God's word is going to guarantee, it's going to dominate, it's going to control your actions. And everything you do is going to fall out of sync. It's going to fall out of sync. It's not going to be lined up or connected to the time source of God's ability to work in your life. Proverbs 12 verse 8. A man will be praised according to his insight, but one of perverse mind will be despised. God promises we will be praised when our hearts, when our insight is in accordance to his word, praising God. You have to praise God every day of your life. Instead of retreating, into our plush crush instead of retreating into our plush churches or eloquent churches beautiful edifices and waiting for Jesus to rapture us out of the lost world God expects us to attack the ruler of this world as Jesus did on the cross he cried Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus knew who the real enemy was behind the cross. Those who nailed him to the cross were only the perverted tools of Satan. God knew by allowing Christ to die on the cross, 
in order to break the power of the spirit of perversion, he had to recognize the source behind the crucifixion. The source behind the crucifixion was none other than the perverted Satan. And Satan used the people to say crucify him. Put him to death. Why? Because they were his in instruments, of his tools. Satan bungled things as usual when he allowed Jesus to enter into his private domain by the way of death. When the Son of God rose from the dead, he stripped Satan, hallelujah, taking the keys of death and hell with him. Hallelujah, glory to God. Revelation 1 and 18. It says, now we have been given the power to continue, to continue that dominion in the name of Jesus. Instead of bewailing the fact that the world is rotting away, we must apply some of the preservatives, the salt that Jesus says are to be the way in which the world, to be the way in the world. So we are to always allow the salt, our words be seasoned with salt, that we speak according to God's word. When Jesus stripped the enemy of his armor, he stripped them of his power. He stripped them of his authority when he rose from the dead. Guess what he did with that authority? He gave it to you. He gave you the authority. So why are we buckling under pressure when things happen to us? As if it's some strange things. It talks about that in James chapter 1. Why are we we're falling under pressure when things happen to us as something that's out of the ordinary. These things are going to happen to us because we choose and decided to make a choice to follow Jesus. Jesus puts it this way, in this life you shall suffer persecution. In other words, things are going to happen to you. Sickness is going to come to you. Problems are going to enter your life. Hardships are going to come. Why? It's a test of your faith. God is testing your faith to see where you're really standing. And we find out where we really are when the heat is on. When the heat is on, it will determine, do you really got faith? Are you just fictitious? Are you doubting? Are you not trusting in God? When real stuff happens to you, you will find out where you really stand. If you're not standing on the word, you're standing in the power of the enemy, in the lies and deception. Every opportunity you get, take dominion over the perverse spirit in the name of Jesus. When you encounter pornography, abortion, filthy television and movies, homosexuals, lesbianisms, child abusers, sex clubs, physical communication, false cults, and perverse speech, you can assure a perverse strong man is an operation in your life. Anything that has the power to control your thought life other than Jesus Christ is a perversion spirit. Take dominion. So I'm charging you tonight. Take dominion. What do you mean take dominion, Pastor? Take dominion. Take authority. Rise up. Get some balls. Get some guts. Get some gall about yourself. Come on. Get this is stern. Resist the enemy. Steadfast in the faith. It is not enough to join a boycott against television sponsors until we begin taking dominion over evil in the spiritual arena. We will face a lot of frustration. God has given us weapons we need to go for the enemy's juggler and bind him where he would do him the most harm. God gave us the ability to hit the juggler vein. You know the juggler vein right under here, in your throat. He gave us the ability to hit the enemy in that juggler vein and bind him with the word of God, to send his power, his influences, his authority back to the pit of hell.
where it comes from. If you are tempted in any way of these areas, you must go after this strong man aggressively in the name of Jesus. God's children cannot take the risk of allowing such a filthy spirit to have leeway in their lives. The root takes hold of it very quickly. If you don't take authority over the enemy, he takes authority over you. If you don't allow the word of God to strip the enemy, the strong man, the stronghold here in your mind, you're going to always find yourself wicked and vulnerable to every attack the enemy throws at you. But those of you who are dealing with this problem, with a strong man can pray a prayer of forgiveness with me. Father, I approach you in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for allowing a perverse spirit to access my life. I realize these actions not only place me in a spiritual danger, but also grieves your Holy Spirit. I want to please you, Father, with all my heart. Cleanse me from all impurities in my mind or in the deeds or actions I have done. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your perverse spirit according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which tells me, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You no longer have an open door into my life through this spirit. Satan, in the name of Jesus, you no longer have an open door into my life through this spirit. I thank you, Lord, for giving me freedom over the power of the devil. According to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, which promises, whatsoever I bind, or whatsoever I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What, and I loose God's spirit of grace and supplication which is the Holy Spirit, to guide me in a life of purity and excellency. Help me to reprogram my mind on a daily basis by reading your word. I thank you, Lord, for confirming your word in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I received that prayer myself. Because the enemy always attacks us. doesn't matter who you are. You can be an apostle. You can be a prophet. You can be a pastor. You can be a teacher. You can be an evangelist. You can be a missionary. It doesn't matter about your title. It's about your heart. If your heart is not surrendered to the authority of God's word. The enemy has free access because you gave it to him. But this prayer we just prayed, it breaks and strips and disarms the enemy of his mind control. I pray you receive that tonight because we don't have to be victimized anymore. It's up to you to make your choice. Am I going to follow after God's word from this day forward? Allow the Holy Spirit to govern, guide, rule, and to teach and lead me in the path of truth and righteousness as I yield, surrender, and release myself into his power to control my life and my actions. That everything would line up, sync with the Holy Spirit, according to God's word. So tonight we're going to end on this note. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray you get to know him. You can pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, never accept him as your Savior into your heart, you can pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, and to come into my heart and wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for saving me. 
And I ask now, Lord, that you fill me with the Holy Spirit to be a witness for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that's turned his life over to the Lord tonight. Then those of you who are backslidden, I do this every week. If you're a backslider and you know you've never been living right for the Lord, you've been straight, you're straight away back into your comfort zone, your sinful lifestyle, your attitude has been funky, just messed up because you've just been giving in to those demonic thoughts. I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. God says he's married to the backslider. He loves you. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for straying away from you, God. Even though I already knew in my heart I could never run far away from you, you can't reach me. But your word says, seek the Lord while he's yet found. Call upon him while he's near. And you said, Lord God, you will come to me and I can come to you. Now come into my heart. Restore me. Revive me. Refresh me with the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for changing my heart to walk this day forward in the newness of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for praying those prayers. If you prayed those prayers, share this video with someone tonight or your friends and family. This word will set somebody free. If it's working and setting you free, share it. Because people need to hear this word. So many people in the body of Christ are bound in demonic activities that bound with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But this word, I guarantee, will liberate you. It will set you free. So you stay encouraged tonight and continue to walk by faith and not by sight. So Father, I thank you tonight for this word. I thank you, Lord, for your ability to teach your word, that your word hath not fallen upon deaf ears, but the word will penetrate the darkness of our hearts to bring us to conviction that every day we purpose to change and to walk in truth and righteousness being led and governed and guided by the influence of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You have a great night. Until next week, Tuesday, TNBC, Tuesday night Bible class, 6 o'clock. We'll continue next week with the next subject, which would be the spirit of haughtiness, which is pride. The spirit of haughtiness. Proverbs 16, chapter, verse 18. So when you get a chance, read that scripture, get your minds ready for next week's lesson, and I guarantee the truth shall set you free. Be blessed.